Hi guys, welcome to another illustration and animation tutorial. In this lesson you'll learn how to create an illustration with texture starting from sketch, how to prepare it for further animation, and how to create an animation in After Effects. You are watching TNT Tutorials. Let's move on. You can see the references and rough thumbnails on the left, and the process of drawing a clean sketch on the right. Sometimes we just neglect rough sketches, tag our idea and start visualizing it. By doing this you actually make the illustration worse, because you didn't push your idea any further. For example, as you can see in the first two sketches, I had something in mind like someone sitting on the roof with a guitar. Pretty basic thing for an illustration, but the way you implement it makes a difference. I realized that the scene is too big, and if I'm gonna animate it, it's gonna take a lot more time to animate every piece of this huge scene. But this is just the first thoughts that might lead you to change your image. You want to be clear about your character, not only what he's doing, but also what clothes he's wearing and how he's feeling at that moment. For example, this guy is enjoying the moment, he's relaxed and happy. He's the protagonist here. So to balance him out, I use an agonist, a bird who is obviously his friend, but it's so active that it can't hold still for a second. The bird gives a dynamic, it makes the guy turn his head and react to it. So we have clear characters and clear action, mostly by creating rough sketches and thinking about what we want to show early in the work, before we start rendering. By the way, you can join me on Patreon and get my sketch, brushes, textures and color palettes. Or you can simply support this channel by pressing on thumbs up and subscribe to encourage me to make more tutorials for you. After sketch is done, I bring it to Illustrator. And here I'll explain why I continue with Photoshop after Illustrator. First of all, it's because of coloring. I'll show you how much flexible you become with the color in Photoshop in a few seconds. Second reason are the texture brushes with their variety. And third, the ability to use photo textures. You can use photo textures in Illustrator, but Illustrator doesn't have a range of tools to adjust textures. Let's click on this little menu and select Release to Layers Sequence. Then just select all layers and get them out of the main layer. Then go to File, Export, Export as and select PSD. Before we move on, let's take a look at how I organized layers. This is the final render and I'll show you all steps before that in a second, but for now forget about all textures and color. You see that I've created some shapes separately to be able to move them. All layers are organized according to the plan of animation. For example, if strings are gonna be animated, I'll make them separated one from another. So plan your animation while sketching or even before that. Create a plan and do everything to maintain your main idea. This is the most important part of your workflow, so think twice on this stage. Long way is to double-click on the layer, go to Color Overlay and change color. I've assigned a hotkey for this, so I simply press Ctrl plus R and the Color Overlay appears. You can change color anytime by double-click on the Color Overlay effect. The easiest way to add a texture is to drop it on a layer and choose the blending mode. In this case, overlay and soft light work pretty good. Next, you want to change the opacity and use levels or curves to play with the contrast and tone. Sometimes blending modes won't work as you want, so let's use the hue saturation this time to match color. Don't forget to check colorize. Now we can use levels to adjust the tone and then decrease the opacity. Let's see how it works when texture is black and you want to color it. I love to use the texture brushes and this is the example of how you can use them. I created a pattern using the texture brush and then placed a fabric texture. We need to change color, so we use the hue saturation and levels again and then decrease opacity. But we can't see the texture through the pattern, which looks weird. So let's bring these stripes below the texture, then duplicate them and apply color burn. It's crucial to draw the small details, but don't do this all over your illustration. Choose one or two areas of focus and go ahead. You can call this lines a texture. So this is what I'm doing. I put a texture on top of texture. You don't always pick the best combinations of textures, but try textures out, draw textures, and you'll get what you want sooner or later. Alright, so I've already shown you how to organize your illustration in the beginning part of the Photoshop workflow, and now we are ready to move on with the advanced stuff. 
We've got a head turnaround in this animation. But it's animated along with the torso bending and with the arc movement. What makes this turnaround more difficult is the hair. But I'll cover it after I explain the head turnaround without it. First of all, forget about everything but the head, because the torso and the arc movements will be done in After Effects. So, as we know this, I'll make a head turnaround on a static torso. Notice that I ignore the eyes and the eyebrows. Eyebrows will be animated in After Effects, and eyes will be fully recreated and animated so this guy will blink. Now it's time to add the hair, and the difficulty here is to draw this hairstyle from different degrees. It's not as hard as it might seem, but it demands your attention and a sense of transition between the frames. It should look smooth and not draw too much attention with the messy lines. What's important to understand here is that you don't have to draw the hair like really from different angles. You must create a flow so the haircut would smoothly change from frame to frame. Finally, I add a variation for a big and a broad smile for a guy. And basically, this is how your illustration should look to have a straightforward animation in After Effects. All layers are flattened with base layers, no unneeded or empty layers, and notice that the layers in groups will be automatically precomposed in After Effects, which will give us more structure and flexibility. As you might notice, I removed fingers from this arm. The reason for this is that I'll create fingers in After Effects and animate them, so this guy would be able to change the chords. All we need is to save file as PSD, and file is ready for animating. Let's begin with importing the layered PSD file to After Effects. Now we can enter the guy precomp and animate fingers. I'll make an original fingers transparent so they could serve as a reference and create a line with the pen tool. Let's open content and select all shapes. Then enter path in the search bar and make a keyframes. I'll move a playhead and change these lines. And after this I parent fingers to a hand. As you can see it's pretty simple and now we have a small piece of animation. I add more chord variations and we can move on with further animation. The arm is animated with a single position parameter. The attack arm is animated with the rotation parameter. I added a text in between the cards so this look like an actual plane. Shoulder is also animated with the rotation parameter according to the arm movement. On the left you can see how I created eyes and on the right how they look animated. The process might seem complicated, but I just create an eye layers, then create an alpha mat for pupils and then parent the size parameter to the first eye layer to animate eyes with only one parameter later on. By the way, I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you like my content, you can support me by joining me on Patreon or hit a super thanks button below the video. Also, don't forget to press thumbs up, it takes only a second from you, but means a lot for this channel. Now object will apply a rotation to the torso. Since all layers are parented to the torso, I'll parent the torso to the null object. It's time for a bird animation. I created pause using the character tool. The next step in this animation is a bird takeoff. Next, I add a tail animation so it would correspond with the bird movement. Now goes a big animation.
This is the result, and you can see that I animated an eye using the same method as I did for a character's eyes. Here I'm working on a grab editor a bit to refine the attack arm movement. Now let's begin with the head turnaround animation. You've already seen how I did it in Photoshop, and what you can notice is that I've added a null object and parented all head layers to it. Head null goes up and down, and this gives us an arc movement. Here you can see how I apply effects expression, animate a smile, eyebrows and eyes. When it came to strings animation, I began with one string, adjusted distortion and set keyframes, so it would distort right after the attack. Then I copied an effect to other strings and moved keyframes, so strings would ring one after another. Now we need an alpha mat, because strings should distort only in the area of the attack and they should be still on the guitar fretboard. We need to pre-compose both still and distorted strings and then apply an alpha mat to hide and reveal needed areas. In the end I add slight movements to the surrounding scene and that's it. This wasn't an easy one, but I did my best to explain the most important steps in this process. Let me know what you think, check out other videos on my channel and don't forget to subscribe to get more tutorials from TNT. Thank you for watching, guys. See you in the next video.